one time I came to a job interview and I did a good job and I said, we're very happy with you and you seem like you have all the right skills that we need, but there's just one thing we really need to make sure, and that is that you have the right work ethic. Okay, so this is not your typical nine to five, Eric. What we are here to do is we're here to create the company's future. And that means that we expect you to work overtime. We expect you to work in breaks. We expect you to not take any sick days. We expect you to work in your vacation. Burnout culture is this new growing trend in a lot of businesses today. And of course, we're at the peak of the era of individualism and achievement seeking. And we're only just starting to realize that emotional intelligence is something positive and beneficial. So of course, a lot of companies are making this mistake of following a strict scale-up strategy, right? And now, a strict scale-up strategy might seem very beneficial to a company or an employee or a CEO, right? Because when you follow this kind of approach, what you're basically doing is you say you're going to reinvest all your money into the company, you're going to prioritize short-term growth, and you're going to want that growth to be as high as possible. And so you're going to want to get and squeeze as much out of every worker at the workplace as possible. You're going to want everyone to call in and skip their breaks. You're going to want everyone to meet and stay ahead of deadlines. You're going to want everyone to uh, show this kind of a culture of optimism, can do, confidence and yes sir mentalities right so this also requires that a level of uniformity right everyone has to be positive everyone has to be on board with everything everyone has to say yes to everything and you're not allowed to voice boundaries you're not allowed to say no you're not allowed to take a vacation right so i worked for scale ups like this i worked for one company in customer service which had this kind of mentality they had grown to be a super large company in a very short span of time and what you saw was that everyone there echoed the same opinions, the same beliefs, the same fake level of optimism and positivity and enthusiasm. Everyone agreed with the board in every decision. Everyone was always on board with what the manager said. Everyone thought everything that the manager said was great and everyone was stressed to the bone, right? So that's the shilling aspect of it. Now, for the first years, this was fine. And of course, it's a workable strategy. It's a great way to get short-term growth. But we all know that stress over time leads to a long-term tax in productivity. And so two, three years in, managers started panicking and realizing that their employees, who used to be super efficient, super diligent, super hardworking, super productive, were starting to sip in quality. Yeah. While they were perhaps responding to the same amount of calls and sending the same amount of emails, a lot of these emails were pretty bad, pretty darn lousy things, right? And so people were starting to take shortcuts. Coworkers and people at the company would do anything to maintain the image of productivity and success, even though they were starting to run dry. Yeah, there was less and less in these people to get. The optimism was more and more empty. The, the hope and the like, excitement that they felt when they started, started to sip away. And so a lot of companies hit this wall where suddenly three years in, 10% of your workplace has started to call in for sick leave, for burnout, right? Now they're not able to do anything anymore. Now you have to pay them to be on your payroll to do absolutely nothing and you can do nothing about it either right so burnout culture is this long-term cost invisible cost of short-term pursuit of success now in these scenarios what ends up happening is most people won't even call in for burnout like two three years in they just leave they'll just up and leave and you know after leaving that company for a year or something they're just gonna feel spent they're gonna feel absolutely miserable like these people are not going to look back at your company and think of it as a positive place to be. They're going to think of uh, it as hell, and they're going to feel grateful that they finally escaped this awful place, right? Now, the way you can spot burnout culture in a company is, for example, first, they'll outright tell you, right? They like the manager at that company for that interview I went to, they'll just say straight ahead, we expect you to work in your breaks. We expect you to not take vacation days. We expect you to work even when you're sick, right? So uh, on top of that, the most noticeable sign, I think, is how long have you worked there? 
right? So if you come to a company and you ask, how long have you worked there? Everyone says, oh, I just started, or oh, just a year, or oh, just, uh, I'm starting to hit my second year, actually. I'm, so I'm like one of the oldest people here, right? And you're going to be like, wait, hang on, right? Uh, you've only worked there for two years, and you're one of the oldest employees. Isn't that a warning sign, if anything, right?